The following is a special presentation of the Decibel Geek Podcast. Geek here, and I'm here with the hot new band Angels in Vain. So we got Taz. That's right. What bands have you been in before? Uh, yeah, man, my, my history kind of like dates all the way back to 89 with Cherry Street. We got a deal with BMG back then and toured for about three years before uh, that band dissolved. And then I ended up moving to Texas, Austin putting a band together uh, called Spinning Chain. And uh, I produced a record with a good friend of mine, Brian Scott from Union Underground, and slowly migrated to San Antonio to start doing production with him. Um, those are pretty much the two bigger bands that I've been with a lot. Uh, I kind of transitioned to the other side of the board than playing, more as a songwriter and just producing bands, and that's kind of what I've been doing for like the last probably 15 years. Right. So I'll do some pickup gigs here, there, helping out bands that I produce and write with, but um, pretty much on the other side of the board a lot. So this is really exciting because I, you know, this thing kind of just blew up. And Chris and I have been writing for two years together, just slowly putting it together. And then we just put out the teaser, and uh, that photo just blew up. So it's exciting to be here in Vegas, and it looks like I'll be here every six weeks at least. So. <laughs> Yeah, because when I say you guys are a new band, we're pretty you're a new band, band, but yeah. you guys we're have been around for a while. We're a new band, but we're, band, but we're old dogs. But we're you're, old you're veterans. Yeah. Everything, yeah. everything old is new again. That's right. <laughs> to quote, a, to quote a great review. So now, Eric Stacy, Faster Pussycat, original. Yeah. And uh, we go way, way back. Right. You know, I mean, we must have been... What, four months younger than what we are now? <laughs> when we met. Yeah, I met uh, We met at the uh, Jet, Jet Boy, Boy Show uh -huh. in uh, Denver. Right. And much love to Mickey and Fernie Rod, Al, Billy, right all the guys. All the boys. At, uh, and uh, tell us a little bit about uh, 
What else you've been involved in? Um, well, before Fast Star, I was in a band called Darling Cool with Greg Darling that went on to sign with Polly Graham. Worked with Vicki Hamilton on that band. Was in Faster Pussycat for their form, you know, the main years, the records, main records and videos and world tours. Um, had a band called The Rhythm Slaves after that with Brian Damage from Kicks and Pat Mizingo from Junkyard on drums. Almost got a deal with Polygram. Um, had a band called Super Cool with Men on the Left, Stacey Blades there. Um, I was in a band called Bubble with uh, a band from Dogs to More and Cher Peterson from Vixen and my old guitar player Brent Muscat. Um, played with the Liberators with Phil Lewis and Brent Muscat. Um, currently, the, the, met, the band that counts, Angels of Bane, also doing Jet Boy. Mm. So those are, the, I guess, the main bands that people would know. And you, you're still doing a, a gig with Jet Boy. You got one coming up next right. month, and yeah. that. So you're still uh -huh. doing that too, oh, yeah. as well. Need to make some, you know, a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Come, it, somehow. You have to do it all. Yeah. And then we got Chris Van Dahl, and uh, you, of course, uh, sang on uh, L.A. Guns, American Hardcore, yep. which I actually listened to the well, other day, went back to it again. You're the one that listened to that and, <laughs> Yeah, that, that's, that's the L.A. Guns record that should have been called Nogdos Plow, or you know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, that, that's actually a Kelly Nichols reference. We almost changed the name back then to Nagas Club, just for that reason. Oh, I was reason. trying to figure out what that yeah. backwards. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah I know. There's, there's so much history and so many things that are like inside that, you know, I won't find myself over explaining everything. But yeah, um, played with LA Guns, uh, moved from Detroit to LA uh, in the 80s with Taz. Uh, almost froze to death and uh, you know died going over the mountains when the headlights went out in the van that we moved here in. So we've got a long history together of, of, of playing and writing. Um, uh, had a band with Kenny Olsen from Kid Rock, uh, Adam Curry from Candlebox and Shannon Boone from Puddle of Mud and Howling Dablos called Pack of Wolves. And there's a record there that the mm -hmm. world has never heard. They may hear it at some point, but um, mm. did that when I was back in Detroit for a while. Got out of the business, moved back there to get out of the business, and ended up in a band with those guys. Um, Boneyard played bass in Love Hate for 33 seconds right before Jizzy <laughs> took off the show. <laughs> Jizzy Pearl, Johnny Love, um, Skid. Joey Gold, Blackout in the Red Room. Okay. Just one reference. Um, and the most important thing is what I'm doing now. And mm -hmm. it has been for, you know, like I said, two years. Two years ago, um, I called him up. I'd been performing as Steven Tyler for Legends in Concert all over the world for about five years now. And uh, I woke up one day and I said, man, who the hell am I? You know what I mean? I didn't remember who I was anymore and or what I loved about making music. I mean, don't get me wrong, performing with Steven Tyler is an honor. I mean, he's just about the most badass singer in rock and roll. Um, but, you know, we're still our own people. And I said, I, I gotta do something. So I called Taz up and I said, hey. I said, how do you feel about writing a record? And the next day, he sent me 13 songs that he'd been sitting on. Maybe he was waiting for the call. <laughs> Um, and then we got to work. Yeah. yeah. And we got to work, and slowly but surely, over the past, you know, like I said, year and a half, two years, we've been writing stuff in our off time, and we both have studios. He's in Texas, I'm here, I take my rig on the road, and the songs have been coming together. And um, Stacy and I have been friends for years, and we were talking, and you know, you guys can pick up, these guys can pick up the thread, you know, how that all happened, but. But we ended up getting together um, because of uh, an event that Eric was, was putting on. And we started talking about what each of us was doing, and I told him about the record, and he asked to hear some of it, and sort of the rest is history. That's how Angels of Bank came to be. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to say. Okay. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I thought I was cutting a break. <laughs> you know what I mean? Stacy Blades, cool, silent. So Stacy Blades is just ditto. <laughs> <laughs> what he said. <laughs> you get the chance. Okay, yeah. Um, 
most people know me for my time in uh, Rock's Gang and uh, 10 years in LA Guns. Um, I left LA Guns, jeez, oh, almost four years ago, three and a half years ago. Uh, since then, I've done an all-star band called Let It Rock with uh, Jimmy Yen, mm -hmm. Sean McNabb, Jimmy St. James, and Oz Fox. And, uh, you know, this is, Las Vegas is becoming the new melting pot in LA. So, Troy just moved here recently, Eric moved here, and well, like I said, there was this, this Bowie thing uh, that we were going to do, and, and um, like, like Chris said, we've been friends for years, and he sent me some stuff, and I told Eric, and I was like, you got to hear this material, you know, that Taz and, and that Chris have been writing, so... Um, that's how it kind of came together, and next thing you know, it's like we had a video shoot, and, and um, Troy kind of stepped in the last minute. Originally, Big Fox was, was supposed to do it, and Troy kind of saved the day and came in and kicked ass. And, and what you see is Angels and Hand right here. So uh, it's happened, it's all kind of taken us by surprise. So we're, we're like, whoa, whoa, this is really happening fast. So, you know, we're, uh, we're playing catch up. Yeah, we're playing catch up. You know? mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot, lot of prepping that we're doing, and a lot of cool things happening. So we're hoping to hit the road, uh, live start playing live end of September. Um, so we have uh, this movie premiere tonight that we're going to. Hence, that's why we're all. That's Stacy's man. Dress man. Stacy's movie. Have you seen the movie yet? Yes. Yeah. Have you seen it? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. I ordered the DVD as soon as it came out. Right on. Actually, so, yeah, met that's, Kyle uh, and. Steve, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, cool. Um, so that's yeah, where we're at. We're, we're um, you know excited for where this is going, and, and um, you know we're continuing to write. And we're you know we're going to kick this big time. And how do you guys feel about how the response has been over it's, the internet it's been and that? Amazing, it's, it's been overwhelming. It's actually. been really yeah. taking us by surprise. It's almost hard to keep a lid on yeah. it to stay yeah. on. Stay uh, ahead of the eight ball. Actually, it, it feels it's like it's only been a gift. You know, uh, it's, I feel like it's been just kind of all this great stuff dropping in the lap. So, I think it's just it's a testimony to to the fact that the timing for this is right, mm -hmm. and that people are hungry for a really great hard rock band. You know, definitely. Um, we just do what we do the best that we can, and you know, it's like Eric said earlier, everything old is new again. You know what I mean? We're like a classic hard rock band, but Taz is a brilliant producer and engineer, so the production is very current. You know, there's some very mainstream modern elements, so it's, it's sort of a hybrid, musically speaking. Mm -hmm. um, and it got to the point where we, we initially, we hadn't planned to release the, the first single uh, until next month, but there was so much demand when word got out about the band that we decided to go ahead and release No One Gets Out Alive early. That's why we're calling it a pre-single. The actual single is entitled to be 19, is entitled 1973. And we that's, shot a video for it. Yeah, yeah that's, that's coming what out. you shot the video, video for, so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if we have time, um, you'll get to see a sneak peek of what's going on with that. But really quickly, you've got choice history. <laughs> We don't care about the history. We just care about what's. We, we know you got the Detroit. Time. Oh, Detroit! Hello. Yeah, we can't leave out. Detroit. We were coming back there. Oh no! <laughs> hey, we say save the best. Don't last. sit right <laughs> at the table. <laughs> I was gonna give him a drum roll, but well, he's the drummer. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, no, I spent uh, five years uh, playing White Lion. Did an album in 2008. Uh, Pay my rent with uh, Gilby Clark. From uh, former Guns N' awesome. Roses, and uh, we go out, you know, ride motorcycles to Sturgis and, and play some rock and roll. And uh, when I got the call to, to come in and fill Bail in, us uh, out. Well, it was to fill in on this video is what I thought, you know, because you know, kind of what I've done in my past is I've always been a higher guy, and I'm cool with that. I like coming in and then assimilating to what I have to do, you know. know? And um, and then when I kind of came and met with them and realized, no, no, we need a guy, and and you know, we all. Uh, he and I know each other. Stacy and I know each other. We've jammed before, you know, in LA or out here. And uh, and then when I realized it was something more than that, I was like, all right, this is pretty cool. It's been a long time since I've done that, so it's kind of exciting, you know, uh, being in a band as opposed to just being a part of a, a project or mm -hmm. someone else's, you know, train wheel. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I dig it. It's cool. It's a cool thing. Yeah, I mean, obviously. 
you guys have been friends or crossed paths many times over the years and that is that kind of how this all came together or you know yeah, you guys being friends separation, yeah it? i mean we all know each other so when he got this uh this event to put together you know the first thing you do is you, you call your friends you know and then mm -hmm. your friends call their friends and the next thing you know you're in a band together so sometimes it happens that way. <laughs> when i put to put the bowie memorial together the first drummer actually tapped was troy i mean he was always in mind as a drummer for this if you know if somebody else didn't work out, you know, I've gemmed with him since, we used to do a gem with this thing called Happen and ha Happen and Harry and the Halftones, yeah. <laughs> back in LA, which wow. he's yeah. done, and you know, well, and you probably done it too. I remember it, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 Done it. yeah, you know Harry. Actually, the last show I played in LA, Harry booked. There you go, yeah. yeah I think How much did it cost you? <laughs> See, exactly. It didn't cost me anything, <laughs> <laughs> just because of my history with him, but um, it was, I think it was called The Joint or something. Yeah, yeah The Joint. Joint. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. I there. He was looking there. I did like a showcase yeah. thing there. Oh, yeah. Robertson. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Weird stage, man. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's, it's, really fun. Fun. it's ridiculous. Yeah. It was ridiculous. That. Yeah. So yeah, we've all, you know. It's pretty ancestral. Rock and roll is an ancestral business for sure. So now I've, I've been playing constantly the No One Gets Out Alive. Awesome song. Thank you. Right? Is that... Along the lines of what we're we're looking at, you know, sticking to that formula, and sound. good, dirty, There's hard a lot of rock and roll. Too, I think though, There's not, everything is is linear. It, it a lot of our stuff that we're writing and the newer stuff is it's got that vibe, but it's it's all kind of different, and that's I think what's exciting about it is a lot of bands just kind of define one sound. And it's kind of a linear thing, and like wait, mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got different influences and stuff like that. So um, I haven't been excited origin uh, like about an original project in the years that I am with, with this. So yeah, it's, I can sum it up like that. I guess. I don't know what it is. Yeah, the songs a great indicator. Of, He's a great writer of, of what we do, but it, it by no means defines us as a band. Mm -hmm. um, there are going to be a lot of surprises, so stow your expectations. Right? Yeah. So turn it off and everybody switch where you're sitting. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> turn it back on. Sure. You, you put on Eric's hat. Change shirts. But they're dealing, okay, this is this and this is that, and I'm comfortable with that. Yeah, yeah. And this band is pushing boundaries. We don't really hold to the conventional way of doing things. I mean, clearly, I mean, the just the way things have been since this thing has started is completely backwards from any way that any yeah. of us have ever done That's anything. what's kind of taken us by surprise too. It's like the band's huge, okay, go rehearse. It's everything, right, yeah. you know, the opposite. It's, it's kind of yeah. funny because of, of how you want to launch like, a project, we're doing it, yeah, totally backwards. It's right. <laughs> I was going to say, but you guys are all kind of hands-on oh, with yeah. it. Is that oh, yeah. a lot different nowadays than than what you're used to it, with, the, it's with the standard, you know, go in, put out, you know, record an album, yeah. put it out, and you got a whole album out there. And yeah. It's different from 20 years ago, but it's exactly the same as, as 30, you know what I mean? It's like, we're back in the 70s, building a following by touring and selling our record out of the back of the van, but the van now is the internet, you know what I mean? So this band is more than just hands-on. At the moment, we pretty much handle, manage, and control everything about it, which I think is great because we're in touch with the people that seem to be liking what we're doing, and we're paying attention, you know? And that's the biggest thing. I mean, I remember being a kid and being like, you know what I mean? People were inaccessible back then, you know? And it's great to dream about meeting Ozzy Osbourne or Randy Rhodes, but today, I mean, you can send somebody a message, and right now at least while we're capable in this situation everybody in this band is responding to those messages directly mm -hmm. so it's kind of a cool thing to be able to do also on the title the, the, the thing you said about titling everything or tagging everything the band just put out the single and the pictures and whatever um, it's funny because the press is what started calling the band a super group we yeah. never ever used that word and have been try tried to be real clear about yeah we've been trying <laughs> tried to be real clear of, that never came from any five guys here we just 
you know, we needed a singer, two guitar players, a drummer, and a bass player, and found that we had that and put a band together. You called your friends. That's you know, what you did. Right. right you yeah. know, we you didn't think more than that. Trinity that's it. it. That's yeah. it. You know, it was like, and then, you know, Paris and Russia and all these press all over the world are going, yeah, super group this, super group that. We never sold it as that and never claimed to be. It's flattering to have them say it, but it's, it's not coming from us. That's just, you know, their, their you're, thing. You're five very talented guys that got together and, and doing a hell of a good band. Thank you. Thanks. You know, it's not, uh, you know, super group, I think, puts too much expectation on, you know, that... Yeah, we're not Asian. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, people, people can label it whatever they want. At the end of the day, the fans are going to decide what this is. Yeah. And as far as we're concerned, it's just a, a good fucking yeah. band and good friends doing what we do. You know, it's kind of People are receptive, so that's killer. You know, it's kind of funny. No one ever calls... 6 a.m. is super group. They just yeah. call them 6 a.m. Exactly. You know? Exactly. I don't. Yeah. We don't, want, it's to, we don't want to be known as a super You know, you know what super group is? Hollywood vampires. Yeah. Like Alice just, Cooper and Paul McCartney yeah. and Joe Perry. And that's, and, that would be a super group. And that's a fly by night and done for cash thing. And I don't really care if they read that tomorrow because they know that what they're doing. It's yeah. not a long term. Yeah, it's a little more band. contrived. This is actually original music, yeah. you know, where as those bands are typically known for doing big shows. And catalogs of the guys that are in the band. This isn't a cover band, you know. So uh, it's something different. And I, I think eventually, once the music gets out there, it'll just automatically be defined on its own. You know, it'll stand up on its own. You don't need anybody to, yeah. you know. Like he says, people like to attach things so they can, you know, file it away somewhere. And uh, they're gonna open their file cabinet, and realize they put us in the wrong file. So. We'll, we'll figure it out when we'll we figure it out. You know? They're going to find us in six great. different files. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> FBI files. And to, and to go further on that, <laughs> yeah, if you're coming to see Angels of Vane expecting <laughs> to hear <laughs> LA Guns <laughs> or Faster Pussycat or White Lion, you're not going to probably hear what you come to hear. <laughs> Sorry, but, you know. Now, do you think to begin with you might do uh, I, something to do with I just said it because set. I don't want people I, I said it I said what I said because I don't want people to come thinking they're gonna hear like a couple hits by Ellie Guns White Line or Faster Pussycat you're not gonna hear that coming to, to see Angels of Vain you're gonna hear Angels of Vain original if we throw in a song or two by a previous band maybe just to fill the setup in the beginning maybe mm -hmm. but it's it's it not going to be. It's not the objective. Yeah, right. yeah, it's, yeah, it's to be not, determined. It's, yeah, it's not. <laughs> yeah. It has. Well, it old cherry, cherry, but it won't be the old old cherry street. street. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. It's not going to be. Yeah, you need ten a minutes major left. <laughs> yeah, it's well, not Chris, a major. Solo. <laughs> you did the logo <laughs> right. on it, which is awesome. Well, thank you. Know, you. And yeah. the individual logos the for for all the band. Yeah. And so, how did you guys come up with the name and Angels in Vain? <laughs> All right. So All fingers point to you. Well, that, that the He's the one with the story. <laughs> it, it is a story. Yeah. Well, it, it turned into a story. It really wasn't to begin yeah. with. Um, here and, and, and here's uh, the only person that knows this, other than myself, is you. But originally, we planned to call the band the Devil You Know, and I went after that, and literally, like. The day I was going to launch the website, there were two guys, a guy from Kill Switch Engage and another big band, released that they had formed a mm -hmm. band called The Devil You Know. Mm -hmm. And it went from like zero to 70,000 on Facebook in like 15 seconds. I was like, what? So back to the drawing board, you know what I mean? By the way, that's a very cool name. I mean, yeah, it's, a great, it's a great name. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's why we we're going to call the band that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good idea. Yeah, thanks guys. <laughs> um, and and I, I've been thinking about it for a year. You know, it's important. You right. gotta, Whatever it is, is you got to remember, if it works, you're living with it. You know what I mean? So I put a lot of thought into this, just like, you know, everything that we do. And um, I was doing some re research for, for reference, and, I, and I, came, I came across a passage, and it was literally written back in the 1800s. And it was on the web, and it was something, something, angels, and then there was like a hyphen, and in vain. It was two separate sentences. But when I read through it, I came across that, and I went, wow, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It just it struck me that way. 
and, and I thought about it, and it's kind of a double entendre. And I mean, if you look at my artwork, all my tattoo work, it's all balanced. It's like you've got the 60s mic microphone with the devil's tail and the, and the angel's wings and the halo. Everything in life is about balance. And mm -hmm. I was like, that really makes sense. And I said, well, what if we spin it and we don't go with vain, V-A-I-N, we go with V-E-I-N, because what we do comes from inside of us. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's where the name came from. We've got, yeah, we've got band Okay, well, just, uh, just to wrap it up, you guys got... Uh, 1973 is going to be the next next song coming out. Should be out soon. You guys got a video shot for it. Yep. And that'll be coming out soon. Do you know when? Do you the time frame? Um, I'm hoping first week, going maybe into the second week of July. Soon. Sooner than later. I'm not going to give you a specific because I'll be shooting Hopefully myself. Hopefully about the middle now, of the Now, is the, are you planning on doing the song is coming out? With, with the, the video. video, I mean, yeah, the same as the video, that song. Is done. That not is released actually, ahead of time. That is the plan it's intended for, like, what you've heard wasn't even intended to be a single. Yeah. So if you love that song, know that that wasn't even the band's choice for a single coming out of the gate. 73 is the first official single, and it will be released with the video sometime in July. It's the objective, yeah. And you guys are working on more material? Or are you looking oh, at, yeah. Yeah. at putting out? A full album, or over time, or one at a time, yeah. and uh, kind of feeling it out the we way we may just put out a song a, a month for the next fifty years. Yeah, but right now we're putting yeah. out singles like once a month, and uh, you it's know whatever like, happens happens. Whether it ends up as an EP or full record, there's yeah. no set. You know, there's no set schedule keep or creating buzz. Yeah, as long as people the are interested and they are, want it. So, yeah, we'll continue. We're reacting to yeah. the public. Yeah. And touring plans. Touring plans, we're, we're, we're looking at starting to tour um, end of coming September, if things work that way. In this business, nothing ever goes exactly as you plan, but right now, that's the idea. And we're looking at dates and we're talking to people, so, yeah. Hopefully, realistically, by the end of September. Yeah. All right, good enough. All right, let's wrap it up, because I know we got to get going. Everybody, this is Rock and Roll with Decibel Geek Podcast. Here with Angels and Bane. Keep your eye out for them. This is a hot new band. Download the single on iTunes now. No one gets out alive. Watch for the new video coming out, 1973. And thank you, everybody, the support of the band. Thank you, Decibel Geek. Yes, thank you very much. And Watch Decibel Geek for everything Angels in Vain coming up. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Hey, man, thanks. We got a pleasure to meet you, too. Thank you for the show. Thank you for the show. Thank you for the show.